welcome to this uh, service today. With me today is my wonderful wife, Kay Benson Ahigbe II. We'll be talking about dreaming again. Now, to, uh, towards the end of last year, we began to um, uh, hear from heaven that it's time for us to dream again. He formed the, look, uh, the, the word for the end of that calendar year. And I just feel that <clears throat> even as we get through this uh, period that we are coming and nations are easing up the, the lockdown, that um, many people may have lost their dream. Uh, we, our heart goes for those who have lost their jobs, who have lost their income. Our heart also goes for those who are struggling in their marriages. Uh, we have heard of domestic violence. We have heard of so many things that is happening in the home. Uh, people um, uh, knowing some things they did not know about their wife or their husband. Our heart goes and we pray for that healing and restoration. And that's why we're, uh, we're talking about dreaming again in this season. We believe that God will release new dreams to people. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 19 to 24, where we, we, me and my wife will be talking some, um, will be discussing an issue that relates to people in relationship, people in marriage today. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 19 to 24, it said, Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being arose from dream, from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took to him his wife. Today we want to talk about dream again for and in your marriage. We, we believe that um, God has uh, joined you and your wife or you are in that relationship for a purpose. Everything that God created has a purpose. Marriage has a purpose. The family is the most important unit in society. But today, sadly enough, we, we do not have families that have vision statement or mission statement, but people are beginning to awaken to that. Corporations have vision statement, mission statement. They spend a whole lot of time and money to put that vision statement together. But today, we, we, we believe that as a person that can that can experience revival, renewal, and reformation, so also a marriage can. Yesterday I was talking to my wife. Uh, I, was, I was saying, what if a marriage relationship was, was not right or there was a mistake from ab initio? And, uh, I, I'm, I, and I'm asking that question. I was talking to the Lord. I said, what if the, the marriage was a mistake? And, it, and I, I just heard the Holy Spirit telling me, uh, what is, what, is there any mis mistake greater than the mistake that Adam did in the garden? And God still had a plan for it. And I believe that uh, it's time for us to dream again concerning our marriage. I don't know what is going on in your marriage. Maybe you have some turbulent times. Me and my wife, we, we had some turbulent times before when in, at the early stage of our marriage. And thank God, God made us to dream again. And, and that's why we, are, we, are, we came here to, today to actually speak to people here that are listening to us or watching us by way of, the, of any of the media we have or listening by that. We feel that God is releasing dreams. He's releasing dreams to families. He's releasing dreams to nations. And even in the continent of Africa and the nations of the world, people that have lost even loved ones, people, people are saying some nations will not recover. They have lost their uh, uh, human resources. But I feel that God has a plan, has a better plan. The enemy cannot be the one that will have the last say. Heaven has a response and a greater solution to any problem that we have. So there are things we want to talk about as it relates to dreaming again in, for and in your marriage. And the first one that we're talking about is dream with heaven. Dreaming with heaven. In Matthew 1, 20 to 21, he said, But why he thought about these things? Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you marry your wife for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Then Joseph, being arose from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife. That's verse 24. He being arose. That means that, you see, something was so, uh, spoke to me about Mary and Joseph. Both of them were dreaming with heaven. 
what will happen to you if you are a girl, you're about getting married? And I asked my wife in the second service, and maybe she will, maybe, okay, I just gave her some expo now. Maybe I won't ask her again. I have, I have other questions that we ask her. <laughs> you, you're about getting married, and, and, and God comes to meet you and said, there's a, plan, there's a plan for you. And this plan, if you go through it, you will be disgraced. It's a, it's, it will give you stigma. You, you, may not even, you may even lose your life, but I am with you. And, you, and your husband may not marry you. What, ha- what will happen to you? What about you, Joseph? Me, I, 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 my girlfriend, or the person I'm about to get married to, two months time or three months to the wedding, and she, 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 she's telling me that she's pregnant for one Holy Spirit. I don't know. I've not met about met the person. But you see that both of them, at their own individual level, embrace their, their dream from heaven. And as they embrace their dream from heaven, it was easier for them to connect their dreams together. I'm sure my wife has something to say about dreaming with heaven concerning the two of them or practical realities. Uh, some of the practical realities that, um, that I saw while you were speaking. Before you got married, what did you hear? Wow. What dream, what did you sense, what dream did you have? Um, now that you're married, that same voice needs to sustain, sustain that marriage for there to be, for the dreams to be kept alive. Um, even for those people who do not uh, subscribe to Christianity, you find out that they even go to, the, what they said, they threw an oracle yeah. to hear things. So which means the physical life begins from the spiritual life. If you're going to take this decision, you have to ensure that you had something and it is that thing that is going to sustain you. The second thing I need to bring in is at the moment of adversity, greatness is born. Wow. Whether it is in the life of uh, Esther, who said, if I perish, I perish, or the daughters of Zel- Zelophad, who, who went on and renegotiated, even if they were going to end their lives. For Mary, this is a dicey moment for a young girl who is um, uh, um, engaged and from nowhere her program was disrupted. You really need to know yourself. At this particular point in time, one of the things that we must do actually is to do the work of resolving identity crisis. So that you do not fall to the opinions of men and the fear of men. This will help you to keep your dreams alive. Because this is God's dream that God wants Mary to dream. Okay. Not Mary's dream. God has a dream to redeem the world. And God, as it were, needed someone who will partner with him. Will you be able to sacrifice your dream on the altar of God's dreams? Even not just even for an individual. Even for fathers of nations. Fathers of business. Fathers of political parties. Because family happens in different spheres. In every sphere, there is family. You are a family man. You have a culture of family. And you always talk about family. When people in charge, I, I got this from Mike Morris. He said, when people in charge become greedy, they plant the seeds for the collapse of the very economic system they think they can use to their advantage. Wow. If what we are living for is for my advantage, my personal gain, you have one pillow, you need one pillow, but you want to take 10. Yeah. It means that you would destroy everybody's dream. God had a dream. God's dream is I want to redeem the world. As a father, what is your dream for your family? And now that you have found a dream, how many Marys are going to arise and mm. say, I'm going to live the dream that will not cause the collapse of the nation, of the economies of the nation. I won't, the thing that is meant for common good, I will use it for my personal advantage. I will ensure that we don't collapse the system because I'm thinking only about my personal benefit. I love that about Mary. Joseph is your hero. Mary is my hero. <laughs> because from looking at this from the standpoint of a woman, look at a young boy that wants to marry you. The boy is ready. And then I'm saying I'm going to sacrifice all of that. My love, wow. the person that I'm practically, I'm completely completely sold out and gone for God's dream. That's where I look at it. We must sacrifice our personal benefit and our personal gain for the common good. That will help us to restore our dreams. Thank you so much for that um, um, 
uh, perspective. I didn't see it that way, the way Mary was supposed to uh, re, um, reacted or responded to the voice of God. And I pray that people listening to our voice will respond to the voice of God. Even for that, maybe you're about to give up in your marriage and um, you're hearing, just be still. It may not look like it. I just pray that you will hear that voice and you, you will receive the peace of God that superseded our understanding. That, and that peace will guard your heart. I pray for that man now. I see you, you're about to take a decision because of the pain. And I, the pain is real. I just want you to lean again and hear his voice and follow his voice. In Jesus' name. And you can never develop the fruit of the Spirit without people in your life. How can you develop self-control if somebody is not insulting you? How can you develop patience if you don't have impatient people in your life? You know there's something called perseverance. It's a fruit of the spirit. If you can't cast the devil out, you can wear him out. The devil has no perseverance. You are the only one that have it. So if you say, go, go, he refused to go. Remain there. He'll be tired. Just say, leave him alone. Is mad. <laughs> and as long as you are not linking your hearts together with people, you are not a covenant person. Because covenant is caught between two people. You say, I've gone to this place, I've gone to this place, Every they have hurt me. Remember, you are the only one that have gone everywhere. He said, no, 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 no. Listen, on a Sunday like this, you are in a show. You are looking at people's back of their head. And you are watching me. You are watching singers and everything. People are ushering you. <laughs> it's an award night. <laughs> it's not fellowship. Listen, that's what's making the church to be weak. Our hearts are not mutually linked. We don't care for one another. When they are praying, they say, oh, if, if you are praying, everything stopping you, come and see prayer. Let's pray for Nigeria. Well, Lord, bless Nigeria and make Nigeria great again. But you know, Lord, I have my personal problem and everything. Pray for your sister. Say, Lord, bless her. Bless her, you yourself know what's on her. <laughs> Do you know that if, there, if something happened and for four weeks we cannot go to church in Nigeria, some people will backslide. Because you use Sunday as your agbo, sorry, as your dara praying. The second thing we're talking about is that fathers and mothers that dream create sons and daughters with destiny. Create sons and daughters with destiny. In verse 25 of Matthew 1, he said, And did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. We are seeing that Mary and Joseph were dreaming with God. They were dreaming in heaven. And they didn't know how their dream would fit into themselves and into the scheme of life. But the, 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 the dream became as a puzzle and the puzzle fitted. Mary had the name Jesus. Mm. Joseph had the name Jesus. And they created the children of destiny. My prayer is for, for families that they will create um, children of destiny. You see, there is no illegitimate child. There are illegitimate parents. Maybe you were born out of wedlock. Maybe for so you that's listening to me, you are married but you had a child before you got married. That child is a child of destiny. And I pray that you understand the dreams that God has for that child. You see, when we dream with heaven, we know how our children have been shaped by God. How, what they are coming to fulfill. Whether, whether it was a, a one-night stand or what, whether it was a child that you, you got by mistake. There's no child by mistake. But as we begin to dream, even for your homes, 
maybe you are still struggling and you are saying, or you are, there's a challenge of childbirth. But, but I, I, I assure you that God has, has something for you. If the answer is being delayed, it's because God is coming with a greater glory. We had to go through some challenges of about five years of not having a child. But God came through, and when he came through, it was something that we had prayed for. And I pray for you today. Maybe you're going through one form of crisis or the other. I want you to keep that dream alive. You will create destiny, not only about biological children. Some of us have lost, some people have lost their, their jobs uh, because of this pandemic, and, and you're not going to work. You have lost income. I want you to understand that in the home, where two shall agree as touching a thing, when you agree with your wife, agree with your children, I tell you the truth, the, the, something will happen. You will create destiny brain ch children. Businesses will come forth again. Because I see new businesses coming from homes. I see fathers and mothers dreaming again. And, and, and that's what will happen. You will look at your children and you will know what is in them. You look at your wife and you know what your wife carries on the inside. You look at your husband and you will prophesy and speak what your child what your husband is carrying in the mighty name of you. I, I, I know you have something to say. Fathers that dream create sons and daughters with destiny. She and did not know her till yeah, she, she had brought, brought forth, forth her, first her firstborn born son. son. Um, where are the fathers who will not mismanage resources for personal benefit, wow. who will not disregard the benefit of others. You see, everything that God has given us is they are all resources. Either they are physical resources, financial resources, or even talents. All of them are resources. Uh, fathers must understand that you do not use others for your personal good. You don't. Uh, you don't use others to advance yourself. Uh, Joseph did not know Mary till she brought forth. There is a destiny that that person that is with you is carrying. That person is carrying a destiny. Your job as a father, your responsibility as a father is to ensure that that destiny is not destroyed because of your own needs and your own concerns. I, I, my husband did something. He actually was working in, he was in the banking industry, corporate Nigeria. Halfway through, by the voice of God, he sacrificed that his dream for what we have here today. And it has, it's, it has become a better metamorphosis of what is in the hands of God and the heart of God. I, I, I don't think that I would have carried it this way because we have two different uh, um, um, ways and background. I came yeah. from a different background. I came from uh, um, the religious background. I was heading to be a reverend sister and all of that. And he came from corporate Nigeria. But he had to sacrifice that. At times, you have to come to a point where you refuse not to know the person so that the destiny that we are carrying together for the nation is baited. And then three of them, God Mary and Joseph had one name. That name is Jesus. Make sure that what you are doing and what God is doing is the same thing. That what you're calling your family, what you're calling the things you're doing for others is the same thing God has called them. Because if he has the same name, wow. then he has capacity to bring salvation. Everything you touch has capacity to bring salvation. My husband was sharing with us in our, uh, our uh, prayer meeting at home, our family altar. He said, something he said the man was the person that was sent to apply blood on the on doorpost door you, you might need to say that by yourself yeah. uh, you are here <laughs> so the man was the one that was sent to apply blood on the doorpost because whatsoever the man touches we affect the family he said let every man take a lamb let every man take a lamb I've seen it happen the moment a man gets committed to Jesus just a matter of time the children will come same thing, if the man leaves a legacy of something that is bad and promise God, it takes divine intervention for the others not to follow. But what a man touches will affect the family. And so as you, as, you, as you touch that, as you touch the hem of Jesus, as you hold on to God, very soon, the children may go, way, way, go left or right or go south. The, children may, may, the, the, the wife may not understand, but with you following him, everybody will align. 
And you can never develop the fruit of the Spirit without people in your life. How can you develop self-control if somebody is not insulting you? How can you develop patience if you don't have impatient people in your life? You know there's something called perseverance. It's a fruit of the Spirit. If you can't cast the devil out, you can wear him out. The devil has no perseverance. You are the only one that have it. So if you say, go, go, he refused to go. Remain there. He'll be tired. Just say, leave him alone. Is mad. <laughs> and as long as you are not linking your hearts together with people, you are not a covenant person. Because covenant is caught between two people. You see, I've gone to this place, I've gone to this place, every, they have hurt me. Remember, you are the only one that have gone everywhere. He said, no, 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 no. Listen, on a Sunday like this, you are in a show. You are looking at people's back of their head. And you are watching me. You are watching singers and everything. People are ushering you. <laughs> it's an award night. <laughs> it's not fellowship. Listen, that's what's making the church to be weak. Our hearts are not mutually linked. We don't care for one another. When they are praying, they say, oh, if, if you are praying, everything stopping you, come and see prayer. Let's pray for Nigeria. Well, Lord, bless Nigeria and make Nigeria great again. But you know, Lord, I have my personal problem and everything. Pray for your sister. Say, Lord, bless her. Bless her, you yourself know what's on her. <laughs> Do you know that if, there, if something happened and for four weeks we cannot go to church in Nigeria, some people will backslide. Because you use Sunday as your agbo, sorry, as your dara praying. <laughs>uh, like, let me say it from my local. Not be your dream. Oh. It is you, it's the dream that God, heaven had for you because you didn't create yourself. Right now, if you have lost it or you didn't know or, or something happened and you, you missed it, it's, the dream is still there. Like I tell people, your mistake is not as important as your destiny. There is a dream. There's a future for you. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 3 to 8 and um, Proverbs chapter 31, we're going to read the scripture and see the way a father prepared a son for the throne and the way the mother also prepared the son for the throne. In Proverbs 4, 3 to 8, Solomon was writing concerning his father. He said, when I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother. Solomon was the only child of the mother. He also taught him, me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. Keep my commands and live. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not for forget, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. In Proverbs 31, 1 to 9, look at what Bathsheba was telling Solomon. The words of King Lemuel. Lemuel is another name for Solomon. The utterance which his mother taught him. What my son and what son of my womb and what son of my vows. Do not give your strength to women nor your ways to that which destroy kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to him who is perishing, 
and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Open your mouth from the spe- for the speechless and the cause of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. David had a dream about continuing his reign. And God told him that your, your seat shall be on the throne. And so he needed to prepare his son for that because of the dream he had. He had a dream to build the temple, but God said you cannot build the temple because your hand is full of blood. Because God built something that is lasting with peace. And he needed to prepare somebody who will continue the legacy. Same thing with Bathsheba. He didn't want something that, that uh, David encountered in his life about how women became a stumbling block to the husband's life. So he wanted to show Solomon how to behave, how to do that. And all these things, I believe, were, 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 were God breathed into them. And they prepared sons and daughters. We need that same legacy in our nation. We need that in Africa. We need that in Africa. We need that in the nations of the world where this generation is preparing the next generation to take care of the other generations they may never see. And that starts from the home as a unit. We need to prepare our children on how to carry on the legacy because most times, revival stops in the first, second or the third generation, not because God wants to stop it, but because of the response of man. It is God to light the, God's responsibility to light the fire, but the wood, the burnable materials is put there by, by people, by by. by People who have received that fire, they need to constantly keep the fire burning. Same thing, the home, the fathers and the mothers, how do they dream? The man touches the lamp, the wife carries the responsibility of that reality, of that spirituality the father brings in. Even if it doesn't happen that way, the person that first of all encounters it has a responsibility to do that. Father means source. And mother is the nurturer of that responsibility that we need. We need to get back right. It's not to oppress one another. It's about the roles that they play. Mm. Fathers and mother play different roles in the life of the children. Like we're having a discussion about men uh, on the on the on the fifth day of the week or the third, uh, what they call Thursday. Uh, um, we we we're talking about and somebody was saying you don't teach a boy child to cook because he wants to help the wife. No. You teach a boy child to cook because that's what he, he will use to survive even before he's married. And even after he's married so that he can pass down that legacy. Because it's about that role he needs to play. So that you don't tell me, oh, we, this one is for a woman, this one is for a man. I'm not saying that men and women should be raised up the same way. But we must raise up families or we must raise up children by fathers who are always saying, God, what are you doing in my family? What are you doing with this boy child? And I, I, I can see, as I just have an impression, there's somebody, you, are, you, you have worries about your son. And I, I, and I know that your son will be a, is an amazing son. He may be having some rough time. Keep on speaking what you heard. Keep on speaking what you heard concerning that child. Never, never you change your mouth. Speak what you hear. May, I, I, I think I should leave it for you to speak.